Hello, welcome to our continuing uh, devotional through Ephesians. Uh, we're continuing to look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. We looked at the first few words of this verse, uh, uh, these verses, uh, in our last devotional, but there's so much here that I decided to spend a little bit more time on these two verses. So let's go ahead and read them again, verses 7 and 8 of chapter 1 of Ephesians. In Him, in Christ, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. In our last devotional we talked about redemption. That is a present tense experience of being set free because somebody else has paid the price. But what we didn't discuss is the thing he discusses next and that is that that redemption, that setting free, that payment comes through his blood. Redemption from sin, redemption from the penalty, the power, and the presence of sin can only come through the blood, through the sacrificial death of Jesus. That's why it says, in him we have redemption through his blood. Now, typically, in ancient times, when something was someone was redeemed from slavery, from indebtedness, from captivity, it was, it was through money. Somebody paid silver, somebody paid gold, and yet Peter tells us, uh, that it was in First Peter chapter 1, you can look it up later in First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, that it was not with perishable things, uh, such as silver and blood, that we were redeemed, but rather with the precious blood of Christ, something far more valuable. Uh, you know, you may have received expensive gifts from somebody in your life. Maybe somebody's made great sacrifices for you, but Jesus paid the ultimate price. He shed his blood for you, and that was absolutely vital. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9, verse 22, that without the shedding of blood, there, it, there is no forgiveness, there is no redemption, there is no setting free from sin. So let's not forget the high price that was paid for our redemption. That's the only currency is the, that God will accept to pay our indebtedness, our sin indebtedness. The only currency God will accept is the blood of Christ, a perfect sacrifice without blemish. You know, in, in certain times in the Zimbabwe, the country of Zimbabwe, their currency has become utterly worthless. You could have billions of Zimbabwe dollars, and yet you go to the local store and they would not accept it. Uh, it had no value to them. Well, there's unacceptable currency to God. And what I mean by that, there's things that people try to pay off their sin debt with that won't be accepted. God will not accept your religious acts to pay off your sin debt your prayers, your, your your donations, your pilgrimages. God will not accept your good and loving works. You feed the poor, you fight for justice, you adopt a handicapped child. All of those things may be good things and have their place in the Christian walk, but none of them will buy you one iota of forgiveness, redemption, and a right relationship with God. That only comes through the blood of Jesus. Everything else is worthless currency. And now he goes on to say, that through him we had the redemption, uh, through his blood, and then he describes what that means. He says the forgiveness of our trespasses, the forgiveness of our trespasses. Re redeemed people, have, and that's all of those in Christ, are forgiven of every single sin, all the guilt, all the shame, all the punishment associated with their uh, sins. It's The price has been paid. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, paid in full in the same way that if i've paid off my car if the car if the debt indebtedness on my car or my home is paid off i don't have to worry about uh, uh foreclosure i don't have to worry about uh them coming and taking the car i don't have to worry about missed payments i don't have to fear repossession because the debt has been paid in full uh that's what's happened with us in christ and because of that uh the sin debt has been paid in full we can say we are forgiven completely and it says we're forgiven in accordance with the riches of God's grace these verses tell us in it's we're not forgiven in proportion to our merit uh, we're, we're forgiven according to the riches of his grace our merits worthless but his grace the riches of his grace is unlimited in other words we're not forgiven because we deserve to be forgiven uh, this is not like somebody going up before a parole board and they, they list all the things they've done. They know they've done wrong, but here's what they've done to improve their life. And because they've made these efforts to improve their life and have lived a good life ever since they did wrong, therefore they get parole. That's not how it works. We're forgiven 
with no contribution on our part, but in accordance to not our goodness, but in accordance to the riches of his grace, which he has lavished upon us. Lavish means he didn't give us a little. <laughs> he didn't give us even a, a, a medium amount. This is a lot. This is beyond comprehension how much grace has poured, he has poured out on our life. That's how much grace God has. So next time you're wondering, you know, and you're struggling and you're feeling that the guilt and the shame and the brokenness of sin, and you ask yourself the question, how much grace does God have? Well, how much grace does God have when you lose your temper? More than enough. He lavishes it upon you. When you succumb to, lu to lust, when you have an abortion, when you break a promise, when you doubt his goodness, when you turn your back on him, his grace is more than enough. He's lavished it upon you through Christ, and in him we have redemption through his blood. I hope you'll take the time to reflect upon these things even more. Have a blessed day.